you feel blessed? Some versions translate this word as happy. Do you feel happy? In a time of rising prices and interest rates, where incomes nowhere near keep up with inflation, where the National Health Service struggles for the resources it needs and finds it difficult to meet the health needs of the population, and where the social care system is broken, can any of us claim to be happy and blessed? Of course, some Christians do go round all the time saying how blessed they are, but one gets the impression that they are trying to convince themselves more than the person they are talking to. And who is it Jesus is saying are happy and blessed? The mourners, the meek and the persecuted. What is he talking about? The word used by Jesus in this passage, which naturally means happy rather than blessed, is used often in the Old Testament, particularly in the books of Proverbs and Psalms. In fact, it is the first word in the book of Psalms. Blessed or happy is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Does everyone who trusts God and obey him have a blissfully happy life? No. There are plenty of lament psalms where a righteous believer complains he is suffering while hardened sinners seem to be succeeding. And Jesus promises his disciples they will be persecuted at the end of our passage. So how can Jesus say we are blessed? The answer is that he is looking to the long term, not the short term. He is not considering short term outcomes in this present world order, but long term outcomes in eternity. He comes to announce that God's rule is already beginning to break into this world and when it comes in all its fullness, when Jesus Christ returns in glory, then those who have considered themselves poor, oppressed, mourning, who have been meek and humble enough to put themselves at God's service rather than pushing themselves forward, who have hungered and thirsted for God's righteousness and justice to prevail and who have shown mercy to others, who have worked to bring peace rather than division, and who have faithfully borne up under persecution, they will be the ones who are blessed and happy when God's kingdom comes to the world. So then, let us look in more detail at those who will be counted blessed in God's kingdom. Firstly, Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. This is an odd phrase. Some people suspect Matthew is trying to soften Jesus' words here. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus says, Blessed are the poor. And some see that as a radical statement that God is going to bring about a radical overturning of society so that those currently at the bottom will rule. This does not quite compute with the teaching of Jesus, however, because the poor as a whole are no more righteous than the rich. If they do less harm overall, it is because their opportunities to do good or evil are more restricted. The word poor in the later parts of the Old Testament is used by God's people to describe themselves under the under the oppression of foreign rulers after the destruction of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar. This is particularly the case in the opening words of Isaiah 61, which Luke tells us Jesus quoted in his sermon at Nazareth. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. 
He has sent me to bind up the broken-hearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. The prophet is speaking to God's people in exile in Babylon, or perhaps to those who had returned to Jerusalem after Cyrus had conquered Babylon, but who thought this paltry return to a land where it was hard to gain a living and where they were still under the rule of foreign masters wasn't quite the return they had in mind. Some people still thought that way in Jesus' day. And some of God's people even today would think that this world which ignores God's rules and despises and marginalises his church is not quite what they imagined the kingdom of God to be like. Do we not consider ourselves to be God's poor, oppressed people, even though we may be materially comfortable? Secondly, says Jesus, blessed are those who mourn. Have you never been moved to tears over the state of the world and the situation of the church? Jesus hearers felt themselves to be in mourning for God's people under foreign oppression. They were still observing the fasts instituted after the fall of Jerusalem in the time of Nebuchadnezzar. They had returned. They had rebuilt the city. They had rebuilt the temple and they had briefly experienced independence as a nation. But their leaders did not match up to expectations. They fell out with each other and the Romans took advantage and took over. Today we look out on a world torn apart by war where humans are in danger of destroying the planet where they live, where greedy people seem to get ever richer while the poor get poorer, and where people seem to ignore God's standards and laws with no compunction. We might wonder what God is playing at, and we might be moved to mourn. Jesus pronounces the mourners blessed, because they can see what is wrong with the world and seek God's help to put it right. They will be comforted when God brings in his kingdom and puts all things right. Thirdly, says Jesus, blessed are the meek. The word does not refer to doormats. It refers to God's people who humbly submit to him. In Psalm 37, the psalmist complains about the arrogant people who ignore God and exploit his people. But he says, the meek will inherit the land. Land and earth translate the same word in Hebrew and Greek. The meek people are the opposite of the arrogant ones who ignore God and set out to bend everyone else to their selfish will. The meek humble themselves before God and Jesus says they will inherit the land or the earth. Fourthly, says Jesus, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Do you not hunger to see a world where justice and fairness rule, where everybody gets their just desserts, where those who faithfully serve God and their fellow human beings are rewarded, and the selfish and greedy do not rule the roost, where the sick can find healing and the lonely can find friendship, where nobody is discriminated against on account of their race, skin colour, ability or sexuality. 
If so, you are hungering and thirsting to see justice and righteousness. And Jesus pronounces you blessed. We will now take a break. And in part two, we will look at what Jesus says in the remainder of this passage.